starting with Marcus Villar, our, our uh, starting point guard. Uh, I think uh, rather than him have a statement, we'll just go ahead and open it up for questions. And uh, you know, we can ask about last night's presser or the upcoming game with Ball State, uh, whatever you guys want to talk about. But uh, go ahead with questions for Marcus. Is there anything you agreed with the coach with, with what he said? Um, aside from all of the analogies and jokes that he made and everything, I, I agree with all of it. Everything that he said was true. Right now our team is playing soft, and that's that's a big part of our identity right now. We need to do we need to do what we can to change that. Did you have right. problems with him calling me out personally? It wasn't so much with him calling me out personally. I was just upset with my performance, and he was accurate. His his statement about me was accurate about my performance. That was just I mean, it was embarrassing that the whole world knows now. Because so. <laughs> yeah, how, surpri how surprised Marcus is that it's just, just kind of taken on a world of its own, not only the press conference, but his references to you and criticism to you? It's not really a huge surprise because he is he is an emotional guy. He, like He always tells us that he wears his emotions on his sleeve. So, I mean, I know he's going to be upset after that game. I was upset. Our whole team was upset. So it's not really a huge surprise. What's been the team's reaction? Are, are they just kind of looking at it as holy cow or... Is it, is it a surprise or just? Um, some people are shocked with it. They don't, I mean, a lot of us are first year Division One guys, so they don't particularly know how to handle it. But the, the team is looking at it as this is something we got to change now. Like, he's made a statement to the media. Everybody's covering it now. We're under the spotlight, so we got to make a difference. What specifically are you taking away from it? Like, like I just said, um, I just, I'm taking it personally, and I, I, I would hope that my teammates take it that way too and taking it that we need to make a change with this program because it's not heading in a good direction right now. How do you think the team is going to respond after the comments? Hopefully we respond well. We need to play a lot harder, play a lot smarter, and that starts in practice today. So, What did Coach say this morning when you guys <coughs> met? Um, in our meeting, he apologized to me first off for making his comment uh, about uh, me individually, but he basically said that he meant everything that he said in the press conference last night and that um, we need to make the changes to get better, and we're going to come out and do that in practice today. Marcus, he said that you, you, the guys were uncoachable. Do you think he's lost your attention? Do you think, he's, do you think he still has the players' attention? I think he definitely has their attention more than he did before at the press conference. <laughs> I said, I mean that that was a big, at least for me, it was a big thing, and I know that they've taken interest in everything now too and getting better. But before that. Um, you could say that we were uncoachable because we weren't responding very well to anything that they're trying to teach us in practice. So, As an athlete, can you talk a little bit about is this the harshest you've ever been criticized or is it is it something that you've gotten used to over the years or is it something that you should <coughs> expect as a D1 athlete? I mean, I've always been criticized, especially as a point guard, because you're typically the leader of the team and the one that's supposed to be most vocal and everything. I've always been criticized, but I've never had any media attention like this or anything, so that's this is all new to me. When did you hear the press conference? Was it last night after the game? I heard about this morning. So. Have you watched it? Yeah, I saw it on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got more text messages today than you've ever had in your whole life? Oh yeah, nobody nobody ever texts me. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been wild for me this morning. What do you feel if things like this say what I said to you? Well. I mean, it, it says that we need to improve. And Coach Henson is here. He's trying to make that improvement because, what, two years ago before he got here, we weren't any better than we are now, uh, if I'm correct. I think I am. So he's trying to make the changes, and we just need to be responding, responding to him and help him to make those changes. He signed here just like we did to make a difference, so we got to do that too. Um, what does the team have to do uh, in general to, uh, to, turn this, to turn this season around? Like I said, a lot of it, and what he said too, a lot of it's just playing hard and playing smart too because we, we come out almost every game we have a lead and then we let it go just by making dumb mistakes, which is not playing smart, or the other team just has more effort than us. They're giving more effort. And that's that's a lot of the case and the turning points of the game. So, well, Will this change your uh, relationship with Coach at all? No, not at all. You said that you guys haven't responded to him. You know, why do you think that is, and why do you think it will change now? I honestly have no idea, but um, I think it will change now because there's a certain respect factor that you have to have in the coach and uh, 
player relationship. And now that he's gotten our attention, I think that we'll start to respect him and realize that he's here trying to help us. And we need, we're going to have to listen to him. We don't have any other choice right now. Marcus, well, you took the comments the hardest, you think. Was it you? I mean, was he called you out personally? Or was it, you know, I don't know if seeing Devontae's tweet. Was it Devontae? Or was there any one particular person that you think took the comments harder than someone else? I don't think there's one particular person that did. I mean, everybody was kind of affected by it, but I don't think it negatively affected by it. So. What was the effort of practice this morning? Did anybody kind of act lazy or anything like that? <laughs> no, effort, effort was pretty good at practice this morning. Everybody was focused and dialed in, trying to learn and get better, so it was good. Do you ultimately think it's going to be a positive for the program in this whole situation? I think it will. We can't we can't get much worse. Like you said, it has to be a positive. So. Okay, anything else for Marcus? Nope? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let me, let me make an opening statement. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you exactly what I said today. Um, I've been a little busy today. I, I don't really know why, but I have been. Uh, I made a mistake last night. Uh, in a post-game media conference, I singled out an individual on our team. And that's that was very immature of me. I take full responsibility for it. I should not have done it. I apologize to him personally, and I apologize to the team for singling out an individual. Now let me get to the second part. From that point on, anything else that I said in that press conference, I stand by. And I believed every word I said. And if that ruffles your feathers or ruffles somebody else's feathers, then you know what? You're going to have to deal with it. And here's the other thing. I'm going to have to deal with it. We're two and eight. That's not a very good record. And I'm the head coach of that two and eight record team. And we're two and eight because I'm the head coach. And I take full responsibility for that. We've lost six games in single digits. Six by an average of six points. And I'm just like anybody else. I'm frustrated. I don't like losing. I want to win. I don't accept mediocre. I don't set, accept lukewarm. I don't accept average. I demand excellence out of everybody, including myself. And last night, I did not have excellence in a press room when I signaled out an individual. I'll try my best to not do it again, but I don't have a speed bump in my mouth, as my wife told me, and I need one. But I am who I am. Saturday night, I'm going to come in this press conference and I'm going to be exactly who I am. I'm not going to change who I am. I'm going to learn by my mistakes. But I'm not changing. I'll change in the area of my immaturity and I'll change when I'm wrong. But I'm not going to change who I am. And I make no apologies for that. I will not apologize for being passionate. I will not apologize for being energetic. I will not apologize for trying to accept losing or mediocrity. And I will not apologize for loving my players and coaching them and demanding the best out of them on a daily basis, whether it be on the floor or off the floor. All right, that's not as good a statement as I can give. So. Were, you, were you shocked by the reaction? Did you wake up and just say, what happened? I didn't wake up. I got a text at 6 a.m. 
Um, Mario texted me at 6 a.m. It's a true story. And he said, last night's pressure's gone viral. I'll handle it. Now, I apologize. I thought Mario was going to have to go to the hospital to get antibiotics. I didn't know what viral meant. And I didn't know what I'll <laughs> handle it meant. So I thought, what do you mean you'll handle it? And he said, I'll send you the clip. And then it dawned on me what he meant by the clip. And I got the clip. I woke up my wife. Well, she was awake by this time. Normally, if a husband gets a text at 6 a.m., wives wake up pretty easy on that one. But uh, we listened to it. And I asked her point blank, because she's my greatest critic, what do you think? And she said, you owe an apology to Marcus. You shouldn't have done that. What about the other stuff? She goes, the other stuff, you're just being you. And she said, I don't see a problem with it. She did make a comment. She thought she could go four for 11 instead of two for 11. <laughs> <laughs> and she no doubt said that she could have gotten to the free throw line. And she does have an excellent shot fake. Were you surprised, though, at the, the reaction nationwide? Yeah, I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised. But if let, let me let me tell you some things that have happened since today. I got a guy that emailed me that said, heard me on the Dan Patrick show. And he said, when you talked about when your players sit at that table and they lose their job and they have to look at their family and tell them that they're gonna be okay. He said, I'm fifty four years old and I lost my job. But I'm gonna sit at my dinner table tonight. And I'm going to tell my family we're going to be okay. Now, if that one small bit helped one guy, fantastic. Somebody asked me uh, on the Chicago deal today, is it going to hurt recruiting? i tell you how it's going to hurt recruiting. If you have a son or daughter, or listen, I'm not coaching women's basketball. we got a pretty good coach here. If you have a son that's going to come to SIU, and you want that son to behave, to play for a coach and a staff that loves him, to play in a community that loves basketball, to play in a program that demands excellence, to play in a program that wants you to get a degree and to do the very best that you can do academically, socially, spiritually, and athletically. And if you want those things, then this is the place. If you don't want any of those things, you don't need to, you don't need to send them to Southern Illinois because that's what we're gonna do. And you're also, your son's gonna play for a head coach that at times acts like an idiot and admits it and will take full responsibility for it. But you're going to play for a coach that's a thermometer and not a thermostat. I'm sorry, I don't regulate. I'm not, you could, Linux and Train could not use me as a sponsor. I could never speak on their behalf. But I'm hot, I'm cold, I read I'm just like I am. I mean, my own play by play guy, Mike Reese, educates me all the time. Probably shouldn't say this. Probably shouldn't have done this. And I'm learning. I'm glad I'm just 52. I'm not old yet. And I'm learning every day. And I'm going to make mistakes. And I'm not perfect. And I've never claimed to be. Why should you not criticize your own players if they don't play well? I don't mind criticizing them as a group, Todd. And by the way, it's his fault. He's the one that asked the question last night. <laughs> this guy right here. Get, oh, seriously. Get the kid. It's not his fault. I was a, I was a kid of gunpowder. Well, we didn't even Tom's over there when I'm answering the question. He's like, what did I do? But it's his fault. No. Oh. I think times have changed, Todd. I think times have changed. I think the internet has changed everything. And I I didn't berate my players last night. I just gave the facts. We didn't play hard. We played soft. If you've got a pro, if you've got a problem with the term mama boys, then you can't you can't come to Southern Illinois. If you have a problem with mama boys, you can't live in Southern Illinois. We're tough people down here. We're agriculture. We're coal. We're blue collar. We're tough minded folks. And I live in Southern Illinois now. So I'm a Southern Illinois. So can you criticize your players? Yeah, you can do it as a group, but you can't do it individually. 
and um, <clears throat> and I shouldn't do it individually. That's you know, I'll criticize my daughters individually. I'll criticize them publicly. I don't care. I've got my youngest daughter Ashley. She don't get on Craigslist to get a husband. You know, I mean, you know, I just it's the way I am. But I'm open about everything that I do. I mean, you see right through me. I, I don't I don't I don't hide things. I don't want to hide things. I don't want to do that. We live in a society where we hide things. Nobody ever gives it. Did we have a press conference or a conference meeting today on what to say or how to say it? Did we have a press release on how? We didn't do those things. I'm a grown man. I'm, I'm like Mike Gundy. But I'm, I'm not 40. I'm 52. <laughs> but I, but I, I didn't, we didn't go through a, a deal this morning where anybody said, this is how you need to say it. This is how you need to be politically correct. I'm not one of those guys. Can you describe your uh, conversation with Marcus this morning? I, I did it in front of the team. I did it in front of Marcus and him, hopefully, uh, together. Uh, I just told Marcus. I looked him right in the eye and I said, Marcus, I apologize. I should not have singled you out. I'm telling you and all your teammates I made a mistake. When I get on to you, when I tell you guys you mess up, I'll be the first one to tell you I messed up and I messed up. And then I told every one of them. I said, but I don't apologize for anything else I said in the press conference. And their reaction? I asked them. Uh, I asked him, does anybody have an issue with anything I said in the press conference with the exception of Marcus? And I said, guys, speak your truth right now because I'm obviously I'm not going to run it back at him. There's a great chance it might be tweeted. But I just said, hey, tell me what you want. And they said, coach, no. Every one of them said that I was right in what I said. And look, I, I, wanna know, I want you to understand this. Devontae Drinker texted something or tweeted something today that was deemed negative. But he has that right. That's why we live in this country. It's freedom of speech. He apologized for me to call me little man. Huh? I'm, I'm five foot eight. I am a little man. It's okay. You know, that's part of it. If I'm going to criticize them, they want to criticize me, that's fine. And let's get this straight. I didn't pull that off. I didn't, I didn't take it off. He had a right to say it. He did it. He said it. He must have pulled it off on his own. I didn't, tell, I didn't tell our players anything. I didn't meet with our players. I told them, I told Tom they can have any media, uh, can have any player they want. But quite frankly, I think they ought to get Marcus because he was the part of this. And I thought that was, uh, if we were trying to hide something today, I wouldn't be visiting with you and I wouldn't let Marcus in here. But once again, we're transparent in everything we do. Any repercussions from up the ladder? Uh, I was, uh, I would say that I was reprimanded. Uh, for not being uh, smart enough when I singled out a player and I should have been I accepted it I have an unbelievable boss and our chancellor I have a great president in Dr. Pichard and I have an unbelievable athletic director and I respect every one of them and every one of them are my boss and they told me do not do single out individuals and I plan not to do it again and I apologize for them as well I don't want to bring any, any any ill favor to our university whatsoever. Uh, quite frankly, I, all the responses that I received today, I've received two negative emails and the other, I don't want to give you a number because it'd be stupid to tell you how many people emailed me, but the others have been very positive. So I even received an email from a mother that said, I'd really like for you to coach my son. Here's his video clip. <laughs> and she also said, he's not mama's boy, which I thought I took great pride in that. <laughs> Has this affected your preparation for Saturday and deterred it at all? Taking deter? Time, taking time away from I don't think it'll deter anything. Matter of fact, I think it'll help us. I hope. And I think when we walk out of that tunnel on Saturday at 2 o'clock, I think you're going to see one heck of a crowd. Because I tell you what, I go back. That's what we're about. And I know I haven't been here very long, but I've embraced it. And I've embraced being in Southern Illinois, and I just feel like our fans will embrace this moment. Now, they can, they can call me an idiot for being immature and singling out Marcus, and they have every right to do so. But if they want to get on to me for about being passionate, about being upset at getting beat, being upset at being 2-8, and eight, of demanding our guys to be something other than mediocre, then you know what, i got a problem. But I know that's not them. So ultimately, you feel like this will end up being a positive down the road for the university for the team this season? I, I hope so. I mean, I, somebody asked me today if it was calculated. I said, I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. Uh, 
I go back. I, I can't I can't answer those questions. You have to ask the fans that. I can't answer the questions all about our players. You have to ask our players that. I can only answer the question for what I know. I hope the rant is not what, I hope what I said in the locker room after the game last night is what prepares us to get ready for this next game. Barry, you called them uncoachable. You know, Marcus was just here, said they've, you know, they, you had their attention and they haven't responded well to you. Do you, do you feel like you have their attention? Do you feel like that you've lost their attention? I think I'll answer that question a little bit better after Saturday night or Saturday afternoon. Uh, I haven't, uh, I didn't practice uh, the first practice morning, we had a shooting practice this morning and I had a few things going on. <laughs> so I was putting out a few fires, but uh, I'll know a little bit more after practice today. But I've said this a hundred times. I like these guys. I like this team. Uh, I think we have a chance to be pretty good. We're all frustrated right now. We need a win. It'll be the best Band-Aid that we can get. We need a shot of confidence. Uh, I think that'll help, help us more than anything. Coach, how have players changed from wherever you first started up until now? <laughs> you go like the kid here? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm struggling with two things. I, I'm struggling with, with, with two things right now, really big, with, with, with this generation. I'm struggling with the enabling, and I'm struggling with the sense of entitlement. I have a problem. When I used to go home, if I was upset at a teacher or a coach or a minister or an elder, my mom and dad wouldn't listen to me because the other people's words were golden. I just don't see it like that anymore. And I struggle with that a little bit. I struggle that we can't criticize or be criticized. I got criticized today and I, I hope I'm handling it in a respectable manner. If you criticize me for doing something wrong, that I believe against, and I'll tell you, Mike Reese is sitting right here behind you. Mike criticized me after something I said one day, and I haven't done it again because I respect him. And I, and I didn't really agree with him at the time, but Mike's really old, and I have to respect my elders. <laughs> um, but I struggle with that. Uh, I am old school. And I wear that banner. I wear it proudly. And although it gets me in trouble, I'm not going to change. I'm always going to be old school. I'm going to be the guy that thought viral meant that somebody had a virus. You said last night that you're making the calls for virtually every play down the court. Did I, did I hear that right? Yes, sir. That would be something tangible that could change in the, in the future that we could look at. Do you think that's going to change? I hope so. Uh, what I've tried to do is to try to do it. Um, what's the best way to say this? Is um, just try to t take all the decision process out, the stress off to them a little bit, and make a call offensively to where it kind of helps us. And. Uh, that's just one of the things that we talked about as a staff, and I made a decision. I want to. It goes back to when you're two and eight. You want to do everything you can do to help these guys, and you want to try all sorts of things. And I, I just thought uh, nurture would be a good deal. We're just trying to nurture them through, try to help them a little bit until we find our way. We got eight guys that have never played Division One basketball, and it's, it's it's a little rough on them right now. And uh, you know that's one of the ways we're trying to help them. else for coach we've got practice coming up in a little bit so we need to let him go and i've got time for maybe one or two more if you have any more questions nope all right okay well, hey we'll see you guys all saturday okay <laughs> <laughs> was it one of your top 10 rounds <laughs> must have been <laughs>